Welcome to another in the series of Smallmouth Bass Life Cycles, brought to you by Berkeley. Help you catch more fish. Bass, both largemouth and smallmouth, have become the number one targeted fish in Ontario. Hi, I'm John White. You watch your time in the water, Canada. It's mid-June. I'm on Lake Simcoe, four days after a full moon, and the smallmouth, second wave, are thick on the beds. A little bit late this year. Do you ever wonder what makes a great spawning year? Great spawning years can actually start here. Females start developing eggs before winter even begins. So short mild winters leave more energy for egg development instead of survival. Long harsh winters can cause winter kill for older fish and young of year. After two decades of warming trends and milder winters, conditions for growth in both population size and average fish size have been excellent. Smallmouth spawn in waves with some of the larger fish spawning early, but the largest wave during the full moon cycle. The timing of the full moon cycle, along with warmer water, before the bass opener is critical. In Ontario, bass opens the third or fourth Saturday in June. A full moon in mid-May with water temperatures at 60 degrees Fahrenheit or better is ideal. This allows four to six weeks from the time they lay eggs to mature fry to develop. Beds made by first wave fish might be used by two or three different pairings during the spawning season. One of the problems with smallmouth beds is that they're very shallow and visible as opposed to largemouth, which might be so far back in the reeds nobody can get at them, including other predators. Largemouth will change locations depending on water fluctuation and temperature, whereas smallmouth will always tend to return to the same places every year. The same area may have several beds very visible to anglers. Bed fishing is becoming a serious problem in Ontario by recreational anglers and particularly tournament anglers. This wasn't a critical problem in the past, but today modern electronics allow us to catalog every bed on a lake. A late season with a consolidated spawn can certainly do a lot of damage to the annual recruitment. Gord Pizer, fishing editor for Outdoor Canada magazine, highlights a 22-year study undertaken by Dr. David P. Phillips, principal scientist at Illinois Natural History Survey, University of Illinois. The study showed that after just 10 minutes of a bass being taken off a bed, 50% of the eggs were destroyed. A fish that was harvested resulted in 100% destruction. The study also showed that just four anglers in 83 minutes could catch 62% of all nesting smallmouth. Constant harvesting of large males can also result in a gender imbalance. Ideally, you would want to have single large males servicing single large females. In recent years, we're seeing multiple females trying to be serviced by single males, or single large females trying to be serviced by very small males. The reason for this phenomena is inconclusive, but it would stand to reason that if we're constantly taking large males off beds year after year, that will deplete the population. Between 30 and 50 percent of the population spawn each year. Once the water waltz and courting procedure ends and they actually get down to the business of laying eggs and fertilizing, the female will drop eggs in 30 to 60 second increments. The process can take pretty well all day. A really big female that can generate up to 20,000 eggs might go and service another male in the nearby vicinity. Once the eggs have all been laid, the female will drop off into deeper water and never return to the bed. The next 10 to 14 days, depending on water temperature, will be incredibly exhausting and stressful for the male as he guards the eggs alone from every predator in the lake and, of course, the weather. Aggressive invasive species like rusty crayfish aren't the only bed raiders in the lake. Every species in the lake likes fresh eggs. Carding the eggs is a 724 project. There's daytime predators as well as nocturnal predators.
A recent study by Tufts Labs of Queen's University showed the growth rates of smallmouth bass almost doubling in the last 10 years. The abundance of round goby have been the main contributor. Another study showed that round goby make up more than 85% of a smallmouth diet in Lake Ontario. Goby are also the most prominent predator. But bass eggs are part of every species food web. An extreme cold spell after the eggs are laid can turn perfect eggs into rotten eggs. By the end of June, early July, the spawn is complete and the males have started to recover. Bed fishing is less of an issue. Most of the fish that are still on beds are waiting for females that might never come. The spawn might stagger all summer. Most of these late spawning fish are adopting beds that were made in one of the earlier waves. They're typically found in deeper water and you can tell if there's eggs there because the fish will not be anchored to the bed and will probably bite a bait. Recovery time for smallmouth bass is very fast. Within a week to 10 days, fish are their healthiest point of the season. This is due to the abundance of easy prey like small crayfish and goby. We are fortunate to have local relevant research by some of the foremost experts in North America right here in Ontario. Research conducted south of Ontario waters are somewhat irrelevant to our fishery. They might share some of the same habitat, food web, and spawning cycles, but climate might be the single biggest benefit and stressor to the species. Populations have been growing for two decades and are hovering around all-time highs. But there are signs that climate alone can no longer sustain population growth. As the species grows in popularity, fishing pressure and technology add more of a stressor. None of this matters as long as recruitment stays strong. Warm, early, windless springs, reduce fishing pressure during the spawn, participation of larger fish during the spawn, along with late falls with mild winters, result in better yields and survival. These are the elements that make an exceptional year class. As of July 2017, things look pretty good. Thanks for watching.